So we're at the Free Market Roadshow at the School of Economics of the University of Belgrade, speaking with uh, Mario Fantini, Editor-in-Chief of the European Conservative. Mario, welcome and thank you for speaking with us. Uh, so, uh, during uh, the uh, panel debate you participated in, you mentioned that a certain healthy relationship to the past and a certain respect for those who came before us are necessary for a prosperous society. Uh, could you elaborate on that and could you tell us what to do if those who came before us did not respect liberty as much as we do? Yes, thanks for asking this. When I spoke of having a healthy relationship to the past, I, I had in mind, and I tried to explain, that this involves two things. One is looking through the past and past historical experience for the things that worked, the things that went right, what th great achievements were made by our forefathers or ancestors. But I also tried to point out that we also look to the past to find out what wasn't working, what didn't work, what led to terrible atrocities or disasters. Uh, as we all know, and as you just pointed out in your question, the past is full of uh, bad characters, tyrants, people who did not respect individual liberty and who did not respect human life in some cases. I think the whole history of human civilization shows the slow but steady increase uh, in liberty, individual freedom, and a growing understanding of how important that is for societies. So when I say we should have a healthy relationship to the past. It includes both looking for the mistakes and the triumphs, and it also includes recognizing that since the past, let's say two, three, four thousand years, we have achieved some very great things, not just materially, but in terms of the attitudes and, and principles and ideas that now guide us. Thank you. Uh, you also spoke about the principles of uh, golden mean and um, the importance of individual ethics and behavior um, as a prerequisite for a prosperous society. Could you elaborate on that? Yes, gladly. Uh, it's one of my favorite topics. The golden mean, which uh, I think fewer and fewer people are familiar with, essentially said that we should not do anything to an extreme. Nothing too much was the exact uh, translation of the original Latin. Uh, I think, uh, and as I tried to argue this morning, I think that this attitude uh, and this kind of behavioral injunction is what undergirds uh, the development of a healthy, trusting, tightly knit society. If everyone shared that value or the belief in the golden mean, if everyone lived by the golden mean, uh, you would see, uh, as we used to see many, many years ago, many decades and centuries ago, a society that was, that was more tightly knit, as I said, and more vibrant, more trusting of each other. Uh, it, it would essentially be a society made up of what I consider good individuals. And I think that that then leads to trust, which as uh, thinkers like Francis Fukuyama have pointed out, trust and, and social capital undergird uh, vibrant, healthy, free enterprise systems and healthy democracies as well. Thank you. And um, it seems as though that the main narrative in the mainstream media is that of a uh, some, somewhat apocalyptic crisis of capitalism. Uh, we, we seem to be constantly on a verge of fascism, uh, our freedoms about to be uh, taken away and democracy is about to be ruined. So um, you took a bit of a different uh, stance on this topic during uh, your speech. Uh, could you tell us something about that? Yes. Um what I, the point I tried to make this morning was that despite the claims and the arguments of so many people now today, it's not a crisis of capitalism that is the problem. It is a crisis of the very people who are participating in that capitalist system or economy. In other words, the economic agents and the actors, the individuals who participate in, in the market, in the capital system, who are increasingly acting on selfish, self-centered, short-term, um, self-aggrandizing principles are in the process undermining the very things that used to keep capitalism healthy and, and which used to produce the goods and services that would benefit other people. 
when you have a capitalist system that is increasingly populated by these selfish and self-centered kind of economic actors, the result is cronyism, nepotism, corruption. The result is a complete distortion of what capitalism, I think, was meant to be. So what are your thoughts on the near future? Sadly, I'm quite pessimistic about the way uh, our societies and the world are going. However, I am, I'm also quite encouraged by all the uh, disruptive forces and groups that are emerging. And I'll explain that. It's not because of some anarchical spirit in me. Um, I like these seeing more and more disruptive forces because those are the forces and groups that will challenge the very people that have held on to power for too long, the very people who are passing laws and regulations and, and rules that are inhibiting our freedom, the very people who have distanced themselves from the values I've been mentioning it and who are increasingly in it only for short-term gain for themselves or their group or their tribe or their economic class. And so I'm, I'm encouraged by the growth of movements, particularly the conservative populist movements around the world who are a direct challenge to some of the entrenched corporate and political elites. Mario, thank you very much. I hope that's useful.